Hello. How do I do a presentation? There you go. Alrighty. So today was the first day of trading my new super polished trading plan. And I was super excited. I came off a really bad week last week just frustrated with a lot of noise data and bad executions and drawdown so i knew it was time for a change and more polishing and i did it and it was uh bouncing back from you can call it the l trading lows for me and to be honest last friday i did ponder quitting but you know, trading is not the only kind of difficult progression activity I've done. And I know that in those moments that you think of quitting, these kinds of activities is usually when you get hit with some thing that uh, makes your progress take a turn for the positive. And that's basically what happened. So let's dive into today. So what you're looking at is a daily chart and you're just simply seeing the volume transacted on bid and offer so if it's green that is bids that got filled aka market sellers and if it's red it means offers that got lifted aka market buyers so then on the leftmost side you're seeing last week's volume profile and then on the rightmost side you're seeing the session volume profile basically the developing profile so this is a new week it's monday the the uh, I don't I don't even know what I want to call these because it's kind of like I want to say it's kind of my thing this way of looking at this chart I don't I've never seen anyone look at like do a day trade like this so I don't know what I'm gonna call these candles or whatever but basically the 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 one to the left of the current one is Friday's trading right so you can see that Friday has a low and it had a extremely low amount of uh, selling and volume and overall volume down there. And you can see it on the weekly profile. So we can see that the buying drops off there around, sorry, the selling drops off there around 1950. The reason we say the selling drops off is because the fair value of last week towards the end of the week was about 19,200. So if price trades below that, I mean, that's up to the sellers if they're willing to sell that low. So we're, so when we're below fair value, we're talking about selling dependent activity because it's up to them. If they start raising their offers, then the price should trade higher. So on the other side, we do see on Friday, very low trading activity activity around the 250s and then you can see that there was an attempt to buy around 19,300 with some somehow some activity at that very tip right there happening but we did not end up maintaining that area for very long now so going into today my ideas were to be a buyer in this area that's a green rectangle and then to be a seller ultimately the best location is the red rectangle up here because the way i saw last week's volume profile was we have this very clear gaussian right here and then we have this this little kind of fractal 
mini Gaussian to the top end. And then after that, there's no volume. So ultimately, this would be the, 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 the uh, most clear location where buyers are unwilling to buy higher. And that's the, most, the one I'm most interested in taking a short position. However, there's a chance that buyers are unwilling to buy higher than this, this area right here, 19,300 thereabouts. And I wouldn't necessarily want to miss that scenario either. So I'm still interested in here. So that's why I see that buying drops off first around 19,300 and then 19,350 about this area, red rectangle. All right. Now, one last thing, the session profile for today, this profile, it, uh, first of all, we opened pretty much around last week's fair value. Fine. Then the, I noticed that the point of control was developing above last week's fair value. You can see it ultimately ended that way. So that's interesting. And that led me to conclude that buyers are kind of in general willing to buy higher for now. All right, here's my plan for Monday's trade. Market first must trade outside of last week's fair value into special pricing as designated by my rectangles. And then, yes, then I will prepare to execute a trade. Uh, this is in no particular order, but you know, longs would be around 1950s. They must trade and then because the volume drops off so hard, I decided to do an all-in three contracts right here. My second trade would be 19,300 shorts. 300s must trade. I'll sell two. And then if 80s trade, I'll sell another. Then my last trade, if none of these happened or if, if the first short failed, or I'll trade once the 350s trade, I'm going to go all in three again because the buying volume drops off significantly here. Buyers are unwilling to buy as designated by this low volume. Sorry, I think I made a mistake here. I should have said sellers are unwilling to buy here. and That's why I'm going all in three. The reason this is a scale in is because it, there's still potential for buyers to want to get to this area first. All right. This thoughts is actually, uh, this is after today's session. So this is in the future. Okay. So we can see that we actually never trade this area here. So the sellers are never tested. Then we can see that. So when I say the sellers are never tested, that's I'm, I don't quote me on that. I'm still trying to formulate my, you know, my, you could call it my logic or philosophy around this. But for now, the way I see it is below fair value is a test of sellers. How aggressive are sellers? The above fair value is a test of how aggressive are buyers. So for now, I'm going to think of it that way. And then we see that today's kind of trade story was that the highs were traded for last week. All right. My main thoughts are, will buyers buy higher than 300, right? If so, so if, if they really are, then, then we're going to be in this idea right here. And then my ultimate thing is, will they buy higher than 19,350? And if, and, and, in either case, I'm interested in selling short these these uh, relatively high prices. It's all relative, right? And um, with the idea that, oops, with the idea that buyers will be unwilling to buy higher ultimately from this point on. All right. So when 300s trade, I sell short one contract. And I believe this was already kind of not aligning with you know how this plan was supposed to be. I was supposed to sell two, so that way majority of my average position could be higher up. And that's a small thing. Maybe in the moment I had thought of, based off the speed of trade, that this maybe I should be a little bit lighter in. But ultimately, buyers bought higher, and I closed it for about a twenty-three point five point loss. 
All right. So now we're in this idea. My my uh, second short entry was 19337 after a new high of day was made. Now I I realized this 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 didn't really make sense because why am I selling short again in this mini area? I I should be waiting for 350s. So so that was a deviation from my plan, all right? 350s must trade, not 3 37s or 330s. So this was a this was this was an unnecessary thing. I I'm sure in the moment I was interested in seeing uh, not missing out, right? It was a FOMO thing. I didn't want to see, uh, you know, a mid mid uh, attempt here and then a fail back, so kind of thing. But anyway, that's my bad, obviously. So now here was the here was the the be the, the breadwinner. Uh, it was ultimately the shorts after the three fifties trade. I got an entry after a, another new high of day was made, and the high of day was. 377 quarter I got in short 370 and this high for me was pretty deep into this area this was the ultimate uh, test for buyers and I had a thought and I was like you know what I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do if this trade loses my stop was 20 points and I was just unsure of if I should just keep giving this a try and a try and uh, these shorts a try and a try and these prices and I realized something later on, which is I can kind of mathematically decide if this should be true based off how I, I can cut it off at the point in which if I were to attempt the idea again and the trade were to work out, I would break even all my losses. That is still fine. However, one more D deeper than that and then I will say I should not give this another try again because even if that trade wins I won't be put back to break even it will not make up the losses I think that makes sense quantitatively and kind of logically and philosophically so we covered that so then yeah so we auctioned down buyers did not buy there anymore and we did not we quickly kind of auctioned off and I covered one at three two six and it's difficult to see here, but if you closely looked at the the histograms in the moment at that development, you would see there was an interesting transaction done around 326. And I would just want to cover one there on the way down. Just a simple logic. What price can I start to scale out? That's that's fine, right? I'm not saying that you know, that the fact that there was an interesting trade there means it's something special. It's just, I need a price and this saves me from picking random things and thinking too much about it. So then I covered one at 300, which is the de developing point of control, right? Very important. And ultimately I would love to cover at last week's fair value, but Logically, I should be completely, uh, mostly out of my position by the current day's point of control, right? So then I left a runner aiming for prices below. Could, could this be greed? Sure, right? Could buyers have stepped in at point of control and turned this into a nice trend day for, uh, right? It, it's definitely a possibility. However, I just chose based off of what what I was experiencing that I will leave a runner for prices below point of control in case buyers pull out, like really pull out, you know? And then I, I uh, fully closed the position at 19,277. And this is kind of, actually, you can call it last week's fair value. So really this was an absolutely textbook trade. Easy, easy money as a, uh, Lance would say from uh, I can never pronounce his last last name Lance. Uh, I'm not I'm not gonna try. Um, from SMB Capital, right? He calls these easy money trades. This is my easy money trade, and um, so that's it. Short was successfully closed for 207 points, factoring in all the all the contracts, right? So we can see it roughly took about a hundred points in losses attempting this. Uh, marketplace scenario so i came out with a hundred points gain beautiful
That's it.